When we think DMG Mori, what do you think about? German engineering, Japanese precision. Well, what if I told you that some of their machines are now made right here in the USA? It's not live, John, don't worry. Wait, 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 wait. So it will automatically adjust for that second pass. In the program, yeah. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we are here at the Chicago, Illinois, USA headquarters of DMG Mori for their Technology Days 2023. We're gonna be taking a peek at some of their machines in there from additive to hybrid to machines that are made right here in the USA, some in California. And we're gonna see what makes them different than anything else. Let's take a peek. So you may not realize that DMG Mori actually has a long history in the USA. DMG Mori is celebrating 40 years of serving the American market and being involved here. And what makes it more exciting is that as the years have progressed, while there still are production facilities in Germany, in Japan, they're actually manufacturing machines here in the USA. The biggest facilities are out in California, in Davis, California. And one thing they're really focusing on building there are the laser additive machines. Um, this has a ton of implications because of ITAR regulations, because of quality control regulations, and also it's helping to support the American manufacturing economy. So these machines over in this area here, this tends to be where the made in the US machines are. Now, when I just said additive, that's only part of what's manufactured here in the US. These other machines over here, we're gonna take a peek at, are also their US made machines. Now to help us guide through some of the things on display here, I have something special for you. I'm joined by John, who is Hi. the Vice President of Automations and Factory Applications. John, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Now, what are some of the things we're seeing behind us here? So what we're looking at here, this is our modular robot cell. It's a factory standard product, but with a lot of different, uh, think of a checkerboard of different locations, different process integration modules could be installed. What kind of process integration modules are we talking about? So what we're looking at here, the in-feed is a drawer system. And on the other side, we have a cleaning station for the parts that are coming out. So the parts are picked out of the drawer, into the machine, cut and machined, and then cleaned in that cleaning station, and clean parts come out of the cell. So the operator really only needs to interact on this side. That's correct. And what kind of machines are these cells going on to? A whole variety. What we show here is a horizontal machine center, but five axis, turning, everything. So pretty much, if you wanted to put this in the middle of multiple machines, you could have one in-feed for three different machines. That's possible too. Yeah, this is showing with just one machine, but sure. Because I've, I've been told and what I've learned is that part of the uh, MX machining transformation, a big part of that is connectivity between machines. And this seems to be a key point in that. Yes, yes. So what we're doing in here, we can see a, a video of it that's showing it, as well as in the machine. It's cutting right now, but you'll see that nozzle sweeping by. There's a two, pair of cameras in the machine that are identifying what is a chip and where the chips are building up and then these nozzles are washing out that specific pile of chips. So that's not just randomly shooting around in there. That not. is actually targeting chips. Right. And will that do that through the entire run? Yes. Jeez. So we have imaging processing software that is identifying what's a chip versus what's the fixture or the cover or whatever. And then like you can see swinging there, those are the nozzles washing that identified pile of chips. And for those who don't know, why is that so important to get chips off the workpiece? Because that is the number one struggle in the machine shop. Once you're making accurate part, chips and cool. And then of course, if there's a chip cut between the cutter and the, and the part, bad finishes, throws right. it out, right. everything wrong. Now, I believe I saw this or something similar to it on, on an INH at Emo. Is this available on multiple machines or just yes. the NHX? It's available on multiple machines, NHX, INH, NTX, so okay. several of our platforms. So what we have here, this is fixture hydraulics coming through the pallet. So this is our preferred way to do it. We've been doing it this way 20 plus years. So instead of hydraulics coming overhead, they're coming through the pallet. So it's a very clean installation. This fixture is out of our own manufacturing plant. This is a 400 millimeter horizontal machine center pallet. Wow. And what's the max weight something like this can hold? 
well, it's the max weight of the, you know, the pallet can hand brew. Um, and it all depends on the fixture design. But I'm guessing it's very strong, very accurate, very repeatable. Yes, yes, and very clean plumbing. True, less things to get caught on. And when a pallet changes into the machine, the hydraulics recouple, so we maintain hydraulic pressure in the machine. Oh, so it actually, it's not running, it is running straight through, but there is a coupler underneath there. There's a coupler underneath. I was wondering how that would move like that. Yep. So you could theoretically decouple that, pick out that whole pallet with the hydraulics if you needed to. Right. Wow. So that's how in our own factory, this, this fixture was in a linear pallet pool. That linear pallet pool had a robot loading, hydraulically clamping, then the pallet shuttles down the linear pallet pool into the machine. So these are, they're tried and tested and true in your own facility. Oh yeah. So if we look over here, this is the interpolation turning part right here that we're doing in the machine. So if we're familiar with this kind of process, the spindle is rotating around and around and the tool point is following that path. So it's always pointing outside. So in typical turning, tool static part turns. Yes. This one, part static, tool turning and interpo interpolating. Right. So wow. the case where this makes sense, if I've got have a part that's mainly milling, right. but big valve industry, things like that, you need a finish that's in a circle. Or sometimes there's a taper where you mm. need that finish to be circular. You can't cut a tapered face with a boring bar. Not so well, no. Right. And of course, that would make sense too when the part is too large to turn or maybe right. too awkward to turn. You just need to do one feature. True. Can we see this thing in action? Yes. Oh, oh so we're putting a bore in it right now. We're putting a boring bar in right now. So now we're showing a boring bar operation. But uh, later it'll be running the interpolation turn. So right there, what we're seeing is long boring. Uh, 500 millimeters, 600, 500 millimeters, I think. So the other technology we're showcasing here, oh, sorry, sorry. Is zero fog coolant system. So you can see it up on the back of the machine, that white box. That's just a, that white little box. Just the white little box, wow. that's a miscollector. So rather than having a miscollector that's sitting on top of your high pressure coolant unit with draping hoses or whatever, it's integrated to the machine. So this unit on the machine, it's a variable frequency drive. So the fan speed changes as the filter clog increases. Oh. So you always get the same flow. And it's integrated in the machine. So it's not just you know the, the separate type, it's just turning on with a high pressure. You control it by M code when you want it to run. Really? Yeah. Now, what kind of industries are you seeing really excelling with this technology? Everyone that has mist. Again, everybody, everybody. who generates yeah. mist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like that though. It's nice that there are innovations happening for everybody and not just for the hyper-specific applications, right, right. which is good. Now, these are available right now on every machine, I would take it? Most of our machine models. Just yes. about every machine. Yeah. So what we have over here, this is our rotary pallet system. So this is a really popular solution, six pallets on a single machine. So this oh. is a rotary stalker right here. What we're showing here on this machine Pallet Manager is the very convenient software that runs it. So if I switch here, oops, Pallet Manager right here. If I switch to this, this is the pallet pool system control that's running this pallet system. So oh, wow. integrated the machine control, very simple and easy to use. That's why our customers really love this. So you can, as opposed to a separate system where you need to control two sets of things, it all runs off the exact same unit. Right. Now I'm guessing this is for super high production, long unattended cycles, you know, getting a ton of parts out over the course of a work week. Yeah, what we see, so for example, what's in this machine right now, this is a tombstone with 20 parts on it. Uh, 10 op 10s, 10 op 20s in here. Just a demo part example, this is a rod cylinder cap that we're machining. And what we're showing here, of course, here we're just mimicking that we're doing every part as a demo for the show. But the different technologies we're showing, machine protection control. So this is collision detection, as well as tool load limit monitoring. So if you're cutting, the material is different than you expect, the insert breaks, the tool is wearing, it detects the spike in load and stops the machine. So it's not gonna keep plowing away with a broken right. tool, destroying your fixturing, destroying your parts. Right, right, we're protecting the asset, the part, the fixture, the machine. The other thing it does, you can have the machine stop or it can be set up for automation to where it brings in the next tool 
brings in the next part and keeps running. Because one thing DMG Mori's are famous for, lots of tool capacity in the carousel. Right. Right. So you could have it, if a drill breaks, instead of going and breaking your tap, then breaking your countersink, right. it can go and pull that other tool you already have set up for. Right. So you can get super long yes. runs out of these. That's right. Wow, that's crazy. So we're showing the demo drilling the part, um, and then we're also showing, in addition to machine protection control, our new software, we call it Measuring Pro. So it's a graphical, one of the, one of the cuts we're doing here is a cut, measure, cut. So it cuts the feature, right. and then we bring the probe in and check to see if it was actually cut to size. So for high tolerance features, maybe the tool's wearing, yep. you probe it, you find out you need to take a little more material off, so it comes in and does the second cut. Wait, 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 wait. So it will automatically adjust for that second pass? In the program, yeah, you can configure wow. it that way. I mean, that's a huge thing when it comes to these big runs. The first 100 parts may be good, but if you're not staying on top of it, right. parts 200 through 500 may be no right. good. This can help automatically take care of that. Right. Wow. So, and what we, what our latest thing we've come out with, the Measuring Pro software. So it's a graphical user interface on the screen to very easily program that, what you're going to probe and how that's going to work. For machines that are so advanced and so tech, technical, it never fails, it fails to amaze me how user-friendly you guys really put the time in to make them. Right. That's what we're trying to do. So anywhere you see these stickers when we're doing walk-arounds here, the DMG Mori USA stickers. That means this machine was manufactured in the US. I didn't know this until we visited here today, so this is pretty exciting stuff. Now, when it comes to DMG Mori hybrid machines, these are just a few of the examples of the kind of things these machines can do. When we're at Emo, we saw a smaller version of this. Actually, it's this one over here, which is a rocket nozzle. But the ability to print and mill in the same machine it's absolutely insane. You can see the size of this machine over here. That's the large DED hybrid. I believe it is a 125. The size of the parts you can do in this are just insane. You can see this. This is a bell they actually printed and machined inside there. Absolutely crazy stuff. So this is actually, I'm told, a new acquisition by DMG Mori. I believe they're called Karakis. And there are these giant horizontal mills. You can see this up here this box that's spinning around on there, that's actually representing the size of the workpiece you can fit on a machine like this. I believe it says 5,500 pounds. You know, DMG Mori, when we toured the front facility, they had some giant, giant machines, but I didn't see any open models like this. So this hopefully will give them some capability. Maybe they're missing, but really I see it as a pretty strong addition to the DMG Mori line. The other thing you'll see here at the uh, Technology Days 2023 are Heimer products. If you've been paying attention, we've been seeing these a lot. A lot of people are putting these on the floors. These are presetters, and you can see there's a wide range that all interact directly with DMG Mori machines. We've got the heat shrink, we've got the tool balancing. So you're gonna see other tooling companies here featuring with DMG because they are strategic partners. Now this machine over here, the DMC 125 FD, if you caught the live stream we did earlier, FD, I don't know German very well, but I know the F means milling and the D means turning or vice versa. So any machine you see with FD on it means that it is a mill turn machine. Now when you see FDS and you'll see S on some of those, that means mill turn grinding. And a lot of these machines can actually do so many different operations in the same unit that it would blow your mind. You could go from a laser cut part to a finished ground five axis part in no time flat. So while we are featuring a lot of US made machines here, of course, the MG Mori, there's still German machines, there's still Japanese machines, and they're still amazing. You know, from the more commonly seen DMU65 monoblock, again, that's got the FD, which means mill turn. We have Sprint, which is a, originally a Gildemeister machine. This one's very similar to almost like a Swiss turning lathe. And then of course we have the NLX. We have the CLX, which was one of the uh, new releases, I believe, at the uh, show in Germany at Emo. And of course we have the Tri, the True, one of my favorites, the DMC70 monoblock. This one looks like it has a pallet pool on it. 
we're gonna grab someone and see if they can tell us a little bit about this pile of pools. Now, here's a guy you may know from Instagram. This is Eddie from Noiva Precision. I, and I heard you. that you have one of these DMC 75 monoblocks in your garage. Yeah, it looks a, a lot bigger in our garage. Um, awesome machine. Uh, we're, we're a small, you know, business. It's my wife and I, a home shop, and uh, we managed to squeeze one of these in our garage, and it's just been an amazing investment for us. Now, you did come from a larger shop background. You own a larger yep. shop. It's not like you started with one of these. Yep. But that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't realize is you don't have to have a space age aeros aerospace shop with 500 people working there right. to get productivity out of a machine this size. Absolutely not. As in fact, I would argue that if you're a small shop with uh, limited human resources like ourselves, that you want to leverage your time as much as possible and uh, pay attention to the technology that's out there. And uh, this has certainly done that for us. And now here, here at the uh, open house, what are you kind of looking at? What's catching your attention here? What are you excited about? Uh, you know, honestly, we've done so well with this machine and this platform. Uh, it's one of two things. We're either going to stay focused in this area. We're going to probably invest in a second one with automation, or maybe we'll add the training capability. We're considering a CLX uh, just to have a, a B-axis you know, type machine. Where... And if you could take one machine from this show home with you, which one would it be? Oh, I'd probably take another monoblock. Yeah. Stick with what works. Yeah, it's awesome. So continuing along here, we have the DMU-50. Now this has a, believe it's a pH cell on it that I haven't seen before. So I'm gonna see if I can grab someone that can help guide us through exactly what that does. Now, what are we looking at behind us here? I recognize the pH cell, but I'm not super familiar with it. Yeah, so a pH cell is a new automation system directly from DMG Mori. So as you can see, even just with the sheet metal, not just the sheet metal integrates with the machine, but the whole control and integration. So this is all driven off the machine control, um, all one user face to the customer, but it's part of the story of our machine transformation and digital transformation. So what you see here is automation becoming more and more due to a lack of an operator skill set and you know, more uptime. That's part of the machine transformation with the digital transformation here with really a big focus with process integration. So really what that means to us is machines that can do multiple things. So the nice part about with the PXL system is as you can see kind of behind you, we have a dedicated load and unload station. That's which, this right here. Yeah, which makes that unique is you can completely work and when the door opens, it completely goes around and has a separate latch. So it keeps the operator outside of the robot system. So it'll still do all its thing while you're manipulating and unloading and setting up the next job. The only thing I can keep thinking when I'm seeing these kind of integrations is these machines are becoming essentially zero downtime machines. Correct. You can load tools, you can program. It'll even tell you what to do yep. and it will keep running the entire time. Yeah. So there you have it guys. I hope you found this as cool as I did. One of the coolest things about coming to check out open houses and technology days is not only do you get to see where technology is today, but with new releases and prototypes coming out like this, you see where that trade and the things coming out in it are gonna be tomorrow and next year. And nobody does it quite like DMG Mori. As always guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching guys. You take care.